So this is a Dell Optiplex 3040. Yes, a Dell Optiplex. And you're probably wondering why in the world am I doing a video about a Dell Optiplex? And I have a good, I have a good reason, I swear. But let me tell you guys how I got my hands on this thing. So I got my hands on this thing for free. I pulled it out of a steel recycling bin at my workplace and I pulled it out, asked my coworkers, why is this in the steel recycling bin? A, it shouldn't be there because it's hazardous material. And B, what is wrong with it? And they told me that there is no video output on this computer. And I think I know how to fix it. So we're going to try and resurrect this Dell Optiplex today. And what I want to do with this computer, if I get it alive, is I want to turn it into a gaming PC by adding a, dis a dedicated graphics card to this computer. And we're going to see how well it fares with today's games. So it should be a very fun experiment. And I hope you guys come along for me for the ride. Okay, so let's first start with taking the side panel off of this bad boy so we can see what's inside the computer here. Now this Dell Optiplex has a weird hinge design to it and not all the Dell Optiplex have like this folding hinge case. I don't know why this one has it. I don't even know why this is a thing, but it is what it is. So let's open it on up and as you can see, it's, um, it's, it, yeah. <laughs> it's not the greatest looking PC in the world, but it gets the job done. So. Let's quickly switch over to the inside of the computer so you can get a little bit better look of the components on the inside of the PC. And we'll run down on how I'm going to make this a gaming computer and we'll go through the components that are already inside this PC. Believe it or not, this Dell Optiplex 3040 is actually well equipped and rather recent in terms of hardware. Underneath the CPU cooler, we have an Intel i5-6500 6th gen Skylake CPU, which is clocked at 3.5 gigahertz and draws about 65 watts. And in this computer, we have eight gigabytes of Micron Crucial DDR3L memory that runs at 1600 megahertz. We have a 500 gigabyte Seagate Barracuda running at 5400 RPM. Not the greatest hard drive in the world, very slow. It's not the fastest drive in the world, but we'll be making do with do with it uh, for this video. On the motherboard, we also have a, a PCI X16 slot, which we'll be using for the graphics card. And we have three X1 slots that I will be using for an ethernet card because unfortunately the NIC on this motherboard does not work. Uh, I tried to get it to work. I cannot find a driver to make it work. So we're just going to put an ethernet card inside the computer and call it a day which leaves us with the power supply for this computer. This power supply is absolute flaming garbage. It's awful. Oh, it's so bad. It's only 240 watts. It doesn't state if it's constant or peak. Now you gotta be careful with power supplies because sometimes they can be peak wattage, which means it can go up to a certain amount of wattage for a limited time. It can't consistently keep that wattage. And uh, this power supply has no PCIe six pin or eight pin power connector at all on the on the power supply so we'll have to do a little bit of jerry-rigging magic to make the graphics card that i have work in this computer and the graphics card that we'll be using today is an amd rx 470 gigabyte mining version from sapphire and the reason why i'm using a mining graphics card is because i got it really cheap on kijiji um, and i wanted to see if i can make a mining graphics card into a gaming graphics card by fly flashing a different v bios to it and with that said, we're going to get into installing the graphics card and that ethernet card, and then we'll start to play some games on the Dell Optiplex 3040. So the very first benchmark that I decided to run when I got the RX 470 into the Dell Optiplex 3040 was Firestrike on 3 d Mark. Now, unfortunately, I didn't record that run, but I did save the results of my best run with the RX 470. So I got a total score of 10,490, and my graphics score was 14,133, which is about a thousand points better than a stock RX 470 at stock clocks. So I did overclock my RX 470 ever so slightly in MSI Afterburner. And the core clock that I used was 1298 megahertz and the memory clock was 2036 megahertz. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to continue using these frequencies for whatever reason, Apex Legends kept crashing on me, so I had to tone them down a little bit. So, um, but I was really surprised with its graphics score actually. So let's get into the gaming benchmarks. 
first game that we'll be using to benchmark the Dell Optiplex 3040 is Apex Legends. Now I did overclock the RX 470 ever so slightly to give it a little bit better of a smoother experience. I overclocked it to a 1274 megahertz core clock and a 2027 megahertz memory clock just to give a little bit of a boost for the RX 470. I'm also kind of limited on power. If I went any higher than this, the computer seemed to crash probably due to the power supply or the cable that I was using for the PCIe power connectors to the 8-pin PCIe power connector. Now, I had the game running at 1080p on medium. Basically, all the settings were in the middle on their slider bars. We had the filtering down to bilinear and anti-aliasing was completely off. And that yielded us a result for our average FPS of 95 and a half. Our 1% low was 41.7 and our 0.1% low was 14.2. And as you can see in the video, I got a really good smooth experience, surprisingly, on the Dell Optiplex 3040 with the RX 470. And I managed to rack up four kills quite easily until I died right here, unfortunately, at the end. But, you know, that's how things go. But if you're looking to get into Apex Legends on the cheap, this is probably the way to go. So on to the next game, which is Doom. Just when I thought Apex Legends was smooth, Doom blew me away. It's all thanks to the Vulcan API though. Vulcan is incredible. I don't know why not a lot of developers don't use Vulkan. Vulkan is crazy good. Anyways, we were running Doom at 1080p on high settings, as well as no motion blur. FXAA was down to 1TX, and we were using trilinear deco filtering as well. And this gave me an awesome average FPS of 139.8. The 1% lows for Doom was 90.1, and the 0.1% low was 76 FPS. And just look at it, smooth as butter. It was a fantastic gaming experience. Definitely would recommend playing Doom on a Dell Optiplex 3040 using a RX 470. Definitely a fun game, would recommend it. Anyways, moving on to the next game, which is The Witcher 3. Next up is The Witcher 3 with the weakest performance out of the bunch of games that I tested. However, I mean weakest in a good way because it still gave me a very good and smooth, enjoyable experience when gaming at 1080p with Hairworks off using the high graphics preset and motion blur off. If I wanted to get a little bit higher FPS, I could turn all these games down to medium, but I wanted to see how hard I could just push the RX 470. Again, this was with the high graphics preset and that gave us an average FPS of 82.3, a 1% low of 70.9 FPS and 0.1 low of 35.9 FPS. And I was actually pleasantly surprised because Witcher 3 is a very demanding game. And as you can see, it's just pushing the graphics card to 100% there. But again, it was a very enjoyable experience. So moving on to the last and final game, Rise of the Tomb Raider. Last up is Rise of the Tomb Raider, and we were running this game at 1080p with FXAA on, anti-aliasing on, using the high graphics preset, pure hair off, trilinear filtering, no motion blur, and this is the Mountain Peak benchmark, which gave us an average FPS of 124.5, 1% low of 77, and 0.1% low of 27.6. And this pleasantly surprised me as well. And that wraps up all the games that we used to benchmark. All right, so with the benchmarks out of the way, that's gonna wrap up today's video on the Dell Optiplex 3040 sleeper gaming PC, I guess you can call it now. And the reason why I went with the RX 470, and I never really explained why in the video until now, was due to the power limitations of the power supply. So that RX 470 will pull 110 watts at full load. And then the i5-6500 will pull 65 watts at full load. Then you have to uh, amount for the hard drive, the chipset on the motherboard, and the, of course, ethernet card that I put in there. So we're probably sitting at about 200 to 210 watts, and that's probably the safety zone for that power supply. I don't wanna push it anymore. I don't wanna blow the thing up. And I can't believe that the solution of using the SATA power uh, cables, two of them, to an eight power PCIe cable worked on this computer, because again, that power supply doesn't have any uh, PCIe power cable, so I had to kind of get creative and make one. And I'm actually really surprised that it worked out that well. Would I recommend doing that in a normal computer? No, but when it comes to this and you have no other choice, well, that's your only choice really, so we might as well try. And it was actually a really cool experiment. I had a lot of fun doing the uh, benchmarking on the computer, trying to configure everything to get the best performance out of it. And I actually went through a motherboard while doing this video, as you can see here. <laughs> Um, this is the original motherboard out of the Optiplex from the trash. Uh, it is brick, so I'm going to try and see if I can flash a, a new BIOS to it using a BIOS flasher. And the only difference between this motherboard and the one that is in that computer now is that this motherboard has HDMI 
and then that motherboard has VGA instead of HDMI in it, but they're the exact same board. Why Dell made a separate revision of the motherboard like that, I have no idea, but that's the only difference. I got it on eBay for 50 bucks Canadian, so I was like, you know what, we might as well. Uh, so if we, total, uh, if we tally up the entire amount that I spent on this computer, I spent 100 bucks on the RX 470 and then $50 on the motherboard. So we have $150 Canadian um, total amount of money spent on this project, which is insane. But uh, obviously it's not gonna be like that because I got this out of the garbage and they thought it was broken and I brought it back to life. So um, yeah, if you can find a Dell Optiplex out there with a decent i5 and eight gigabytes of RAM, I would say go for it. I would say definitely use those uh, office all-in-one PCs as an entry-level gaming PC. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. My name's Ken Olson on this wheel chart. Oh, I forgot to mention, if you guys wanna know how I made that backplate for the RX 470, I made that myself by hand. Uh, I made it out of acrylic spray paint and then some clear coat. But if you guys wanna see a video tutorial on it, I'd be more than happy to do it for you guys. But anyways, hit that like button if you like this video, hit that dislike button. Let me know how I did with the benchmarks. I'm brand new to it. Anyways, my name's Ken Olson on this wheel chart. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Once again, I will see you guys in the next video. Take care, everyone.